Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. Christians are called all sorts of things in the New Testament. Beloved children, overcomers, sons of the living God, lights, an aroma of Christ, salt, temples of the Holy Spirit, living epistles, and even friends of Jesus. But we didn't start out that way for sure. Romans 5, 6 through 11 paints a clear picture of how we started out. It says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love toward us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Do you recognize yourself in some of those verses? It says we were helpless, ungodly, sinful enemies of God. Before Jesus came to earth and died for us, everyone was helpless, powerless to bridge the gap that sin had made between us and God. We could do nothing to achieve our own salvation, no matter how hard we tried. We didn't just need to be good or to do good things so our good outweighs the bad. We needed a heart transplant, a new heart, a new life. We were spiritually dead in our sins. It also says we were ungodly. We did what we wanted to do, opposing God's sovereignty. We gave in to sinful desires without thinking about what the Lord wanted in our lives. We turned our back on Him. We were sinners. In breaking one commandment, we sinned, thus becoming a sinner. Whether it was the first lie we told our parents, or knowingly disobeying them in some way, We rebelled against God's will and went on our own path. And as Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. Sin deserves God's wrath. Verse 10 says that we were enemies of God, opposed to him as we said no to his perfect ways, just like a two-year-old's favorite word. But don't you love how Paul puts this? When we were without strength, while we were still sinners, when we were enemies, Right when we were in the middle of our sinful thoughts, behaviors, and attitudes, like the crowd mocking Jesus around the cross, Jesus died for us. Remember what he said just before he died? Father, forgive them. His death brought life. God demonstrated his love for us, as verse 8 says, by dying for us, reconciling us, closing the gap between us and God with a cross. God the Father poured out the wrath that we deserve on God the Son so that we could live. Us, powerless, ungodly, sinful enemies. And he gave us a new identity in him. Sin is no longer our identity, though we still sin sometimes. Our identity is in Christ as God's beloved children. Salvation isn't for the good or worthy. Aren't you glad? Because none of us are that. It's not by our works, thank the Lord, because we could never be good enough. He reached down to us when there was no way we could reach him. So how can we respond to what God has done for us, who he's made us become? As verse 11 says, we can rejoice. And as Paul says in the next chapter, we can present ourselves to God as instruments of his righteousness for him to use as he wishes. How have you done that in your life? Are you rejoicing in what he's made you through his death on the cross? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes on our website, which you can find in the description below. Thank you for listening. And remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.